Hey guys, Bingo Cat here. So today's video, I'm going to be giving an overview of the Huawei M865C. Now, what makes this phone so special, you may ask? Well, it's a phone that is still in 2018 running Android Gingerbread. So, obviously, since it's running Android Gingerbread, this is not a new phone. It's pretty old. The original manufacturer date is June 26, 2012. And this wasn't even a good phone back in 2012. Back in 2012, this was a cheap smartphone from track phone. So yeah, this wasn't even a good phone back in 2012. And um, first impressions for this phone is that it is pretty small. I will admit that although initially I was like, you know, I kind of miss the uh, compact form factor of older phones. Um, once I actually started using this phone a little bit, I was like, mm, nah, I much prefer the bigger screen phones of today. So let me give you guys a basic little screen size comparison. So on the right, we got my Samsung Galaxy Note 8, which has a 6.3 inch 18 by 9 screen. And then this has a 4x3, so not even 16 by 9 4x3, 3.5 inch screen. I don't even know the resolution, but I think it's 480. I don't, I don't remember. So looking at the outside of the phone, besides the small screen, there's also a bunch of little buttons down there. So you got home, you got your menu option button, back button. There's also a search button, which is pretty cool, but notice there's no multitasking button. And you know, since it's a phone from 2012 and it's an old phone, you do have big bezels, which once again, I don't care too much about big bezels, but they are noticeably big, but I think they were smaller than the iPhone 4S's bezels. So there's that. And so you got your uh, speaker piece up here. So at the bottom, you do have micro USB for charging. And you also got your mic down there. At the top, you do have a headphone jack, which as I've mentioned plenty of times before, is not something you find in all modern electronics today, unfortunately. Now on the back of the phone, you do have a five megapixel camera, but the pictures that this phone takes aren't good at all. Got your Huawei logo, you got a speaker down here. Now, here's something that I do like about this phone. You can easily just pop the back off Remove the battery and replace it if the battery goes bad. Why don't modern phones allow that? Yes, the phone is cheap plastic. But, hey, you got a removable battery, which is something that my $930 Note 8 doesn't even have. And then, of course, you got your uh, micro SD card slot. I went ahead and put in a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. Then on this side here, you got nothing. And this side is just the volume rocker. Let's go ahead and turn on this phone. Here we go. You got your Huawei logo there. And let's wait for it to turn on. All right, so the phone is definitely booting up and it didn't take a long time to boot up, but it wasn't that quick either. So the first thing you'll notice when you boot into the operating system, and the screen already went to sleep on me, the first thing you'll notice is, well, it looks old. This is Android Gingerbread, ladies and gentlemen. And once again, the screen is pretty small. You notice that, especially once you turn the phone on. And so if we look at included apps with the phone, um, we just have some basic apps for the most part. Almost all of them are very outdated versions of uh, current apps. And of course, this was before Google started including Chrome as the default browser in Android, so you just had your Android browser. You also have things like calculator, calendar, call log, um, just normal phone stuff. Then you scroll down and... Um, that's basically it, just some basic apps like note taking. It does have Google Talk on here, which doesn't exist anymore. So when I turned this phone on, I noticed it had the Android market on there, but it auto updated itself to the Play Store. Now it's very weird though. When I tap on the Play Store, nothing happens. I can't load any part of the Play Store, so I don't 
know why. Like, I let this sit here for like 30 minutes and nothing still loaded, so. So, how's the camera on here? Well, here's a quick and dirty test. I'm just going to go ahead and take a picture of my iPad in front of me. And that was the loudest camera sound ever, but here you go. And here is our very, very, very nice 5 megapixel camera. And by very nice, that was obvious sarcasm. Now you can take a video. Let's see what resolution you can take videos at. So, it doesn't s technically say it says high quality, low quality, MMS, and YouTube. So, we're going to do high quality. Um, let's tap the record button. And I'm just going to sort of record... Um, and done. Yep, it's basically a typical old cheap camera video. Now let's see if we can get YouTube to load on this thing. Now this is the old YouTube app, so I don't know. Um, let's see, what's it say? There was a problem with the network? Yeah, I can believe it. As you guys can see, there is some user interface lag too. So, we're gonna just try and load up YouTube in the browser. Um, let's just go to... You... Um, let's go to YouTube.com. As you guys can see, the keyboard is so small. It's, it's actually kind of hard to type on because of how small it is. A U-T-B-H you youtube dot hello dot com go I don't even know if it's gonna load with this default browser well there's security problems but I want to view YouTube anyways okay Looks like YouTube's gonna load, and it actually looks like the modern version of YouTube. So we're gonna look for a video um, that I recorded in 4K, like this phone will be able to play a 4K video, but let's see how well this loads. Alright, so it's claiming it's playing an HQ video, whatever this phone defines as HQ. Alright guys, Bingo Cat here. So this is just going to so be the speakers video. aren't the best in the world, but they're not terrible either. And YouTube, you know, even though the app didn't load, at least the website works, and you can watch smooth YouTube video on it. Seriously, this cheap little crappy smartphone from 2012 can watch YouTube videos on it, but I have a huge bulky laptop from 2003 sitting to the right of me that you can't really watch YouTube on, which is kind of stupid. Alright, so let's just do some general web browsing, so I'm just going to go to Google and see if it loads. Google... dot com... Let's go. Okay, fair enough. And at Google, let's go to let's go to the BBC's website. Okay, that loaded fast enough, that's for sure. But will the BBC's website load quickly? Okay, it looks like it's loading and it looks like the modern version of the website, so um I'm impressed this phone is not doing as bad as I thought it would at modern activities. Just because it runs an old operating system doesn't mean this phone totally fails at modern activities. Now, I read stories of people running Google Maps on phones from like 2007, so I assume Google Maps will work on here even if it's a really old version of Google Maps. Alright, so indoor maps are new, menu added, I can't even scroll down in the what's new thing. Oh, now it let me. So let's zoom in on, I don't know. Let's go to um, 
Phoenix. Um, whoops. Phoenix. If I can spell Air Arizona. All right. Map seems to be kind of slow, but it works, I guess. Now, how do I zoom in? Oh, I just tapped the plus button. I guess this was before Google got pinched to zoom. You can find places, do navigation. Can I turn on satellite? Here we go. Let's just zoom in to Phoenix here. I'm going to zoom into this road. Okay, well the picture quality is really, really, really poor probably because of the low resolution display. Um, it works. Let's see if voice search still works. Um, yeah, I'll let Google use my location. Okay, so voice controls might still work in here. Um, set alarm 10 minutes from now. And it just Googled how to set an alarm 10 minutes from now. It's nowhere near as advanced as Google Assistant or even Siri back in 2011, apparently. Now, the Play Store still isn't working, but I'm curious to see if I can just download new APKs of apps and it will still work this way. So, and let's ignore the website security problems. All right, it says it's downloading, but I don't see it actually doing anything. Oh, well, I guess we're not downloading YouTube. So what are my impressions about this phone at the end of the day? It's not as bad as I thought it would be, but otherwise, there's basically no reason to use this phone in 2018. Like, here I have this blue advanced A5 Plus smartphone, right? This thing only costs $80, and it does almost everything that my Note 8 does. Well, this thing on the other end is pretty much obsolete. I mean, it can still do some modern tasks on here, but if you can't use a modern version of the Play Store, I mean, it's like, this immediately becomes more of a dumb phone and less of a smartphone. So thank you guys for watching this overview of this old gingerbread era smartphone. Please like this video if you liked it. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Please check me out on Twitter, Instagram, and Discord. Link down below in the video description. And as always, I thank you guys for watching. Goodbye.